Squeeze La Familia, man. We back again. Back. We back with um, some London. We got some of the most dangerous, the most dangerous in East London, Mel Shrek. Good on, good on, boom. Mm -hmm. Like, comment, subscribe. Oh, check the link. Click the links in the description. Follow us on the gram. All of that is in the description. Kill over Jigga, dollar sign, so squeeze live familiar. See it. Click the links, man. Go check out the merch, man. Different colors coming next week on the website. Just put your orders in, man. Let's get into this video. Now, I hit a video you guys have requested for this video. So let's try and smash 1K likes for my next video. And guys, if you... Let's get 50k likes, man. I said 50k. <laughs> I said let's get 50k likes. Let us get 50 likes. I mean, we would love 50k likes, but we'd be happy with 50. Let's get 50 likes on this video. Last video, I said follow my Insta for a prize. I actually have to blur out my Insta in the video because you guys are going absolutely crazy with the phone request. Maybe 200. Crazy, crazy. You guys requested me. But today's winner is Pringles PRVT. So if that's you, please send me a message and collect your prize. But I actually made a new Insta. Should be on the screen now. Follow that one. And I'll pick a random follower for the chance to win a £50 Amazon gift card. One last thing as well. Everything I talk about in these videos are public knowledge, by the way. I'm not spewing any secrets or underground information. Just a quick disclaimer for all my videos. Anyway, it's... Facts. Niggas definitely gotta be letting that be known. Because these niggas be sounding like the police. And a lot of them don't be saying that. They be like, yeah, he's a legend. He's supposed to be wanted for this killing. Yeah. Nigga ain't get locked up for nothing. But you say he did this killing. Come on, bro. Don't say that. That's that Chicago shit. All them Chicago oh, ones, bro. Politics, what? They be also, yeah, he killed this one and this one. But he's still out. They ain't get charged for it. Y'all tripping. <laughs> Now, Marley's Trip is a gang from the late in the Wolfenstone area. There's actually two different sets that make up this gang. LTZ, which reps the E10 postcode, and SJ, which reps the E17 postcode. Now I mention postcodes, I mean more where the gangs are based rather than rep. Unlike a lot of other gangs in London nowadays, Marley's Trip doesn't really beef over the area you're from. Their beefs are all drug and revenge related, which is how gangs should be, technically speaking. I'm not encouraging any... To... What he said? It should be over, buddy. It should be over. Gang should be over territory most of the time, though. So what the fuck is he talking about? Reps the E17 postcode. Now I mention postcodes. I mean more where the gangs are based rather than rep. Unlike a lot of other gangs in London nowadays, Marley Street doesn't really beef over the area you're from. Their beefs are all drug and revenge related, which is how gangs should be, technically speaking. I'm not encouraging any type of gang activity, of course. But obviously, it does make sense why a gang would have an issue with another gang if they're stopping them from making money. Now, the Marley Strip gang controlled most of the drugs being served in the areas. But this wasn't always the case. See, most Marley Strip older members originated from another group called the Beeman Boys, who were originally a Jamaican-based gang who used to run the area. The Beeman Boys are based in the state in East London. Got the Yachties out there. The Yachties. You know they stepping. You know these be stepping everywhere. We be bugged out. Why, why? They had the longest established gang in the area, and the fourth had around 100 members. In the late 90s especially, they were seen as the most dominant gang in the area. Oh, but the Beeman gang has always had issues with neighbors. They be ready to poke you. They be really ready to, they ready to do whatever, but they really ready to poke your ass. Put a hole right through you. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's why I fuck with the Jamaicans. <laughs> why, why, brethren? Gangs in the area, like the Oliver Coast gang, or OCG, when a member of OCG robbed a member of Beeman Boys over a dispute over drugs. So the Beeman crew around these times was the biggest gang in the area because of the size of their estate. But because they were beefing so many different smaller areas, they were starting to get outnumbered. Estates are the UK version of the projects, if you don't know. And just like what we're seeing a lot now with these older crime-ridden estates, a lot of Beeman is now being demolished and refurbished in an attempt to gentrify the area and push more lower-income families further away from London. So it's got to the point where pretty much all members of the Beeman gang don't actually live on the Beeman estate anymore. And this is a reality for pretty much most gangs in London right now. Many blocks which had high gang activity have now been demolished and rebuilt, which means most original gang members will be forced to relocate, and gang leaders will have to recruit new people from neighboring areas. But because of Beeman's big reputation, recruiting wasn't really an issue for them. But anyway, yeah, Beeman boys included a lot of these Marley Strip members, until they split from the gang and created their own organization. This is more than likely to create their own drug lines and territory, or it could have been because of personal reasons inside the gang itself. But either way, Marley Strip now beefed the Beeman boys gang over territory. Now what a lot of people don't know about the Marley Strip gang, it isn't just a Somali gang, despite the name Marley Strip. The founding Members of the gang were Somali, but there's all different types of races and ethnicities who were part of the gang. Now, my strip has caused such a massive disruption to the borough. Somali is deep in the UK, and they 
push. Yeah. They're not playing. Niggas ain't playing. Niggas is not playing, bro. Niggas be pirates, bro. Alright, mate. Niggas are good ass pirates, man. Can you guys are really some savage things. They've managed to clean up a lot of drug trade in the area. Yeah, We're also running counting and operations outside. Yeah, you are. Do. You seen that Captain Phillips movie? Nah. The niggas were Somalians who took over that shit, bro. That U.S. shit. Yeah. Somalians. Niggas be putting that they was ready to die for that money. <laughs> you, know, you can tell us niggas Somalians. That's all the niggas in the UK down there. Mm. Well, oh, it's a nigga who's sort of essence. Oh, and even know. all the way to Scotland. And they've caused such a massive disruption that they're literally beefing the whole of their borough. So they're from a borough called Northern Forest. And if you don't know what boroughs are, they're pretty much sections in London. I think there's around 32 boroughs in London. And the main gang's in the... Okay, London like New York, nigga. They got boroughs. You heard him, he said they got boroughs like sections, like nigga like the Bronx, like Queens. Damn. Yeah, that's fire. Shout out to London, man. Apart from Marley Strip, on the Beeman Crew, LGR, Primary Court, and Higham Hill. And Marley Strip are literally beefing all of these gangs. Some of these gangs literally set aside their beef just to focus on beef. I said Mal Strip, that shit is Mally Strip. The niggas beefing with everybody. Niggas like. <laughs> It was like, uh, nah. <laughs> Which means these guys must be really putting on some pressure. But Mali Strip isn't the only Somalian based gang that have shown their ruthlessness. Other Somali gangs like Ager Grove in Camden have also shown they're not to play with. And this isn't just a UK thing. Somali gangs have dominated a lot of other countries like Sweden and Canada, where they operate mass drug operations over there as well, and have a big reputation of being quite savage. But when we look into the history of Somalia, we can start to see why. Like these Somali born people would have been surrounded by violence most of their life, with constant civil wars, conflicts with Ethiopia, and piracy taking over the country. I guess a lot of these Somali gang members are just a product of their environment, which is sad because deep down, Somalis are one of the most funny and genuine people you meet. But anyway, back to Mali Street. So as like I said, they're pretty much beefing their whole borough, but they have made little alliances, like a smaller gang in the area called the VM Crew. And when I say alliances, I mean pretty much absorbing the gang. Because Mali Strip is such a massive group, they have managed to take over smaller gangs and building their enterprise. Which can work good on the money side of things, but can cause a lot of trouble for the gang. Those niggas want some get down, lay down shit. <coughs> Stay property shit. Try to pull up a shorty. <laughs> well, sometimes this creates sort of a divide in between gangs, like the Somalian gang Teep Hill in North London. They have two completely different sets branch out the gang, which both beef each other. Which is hella weird because they both roll with the same name Teep Hill. And it's just like one minute you're friends and one minute you're not. And it could even just be one person within that group. You could all literally be fine. There could be 10 guys from this gang, 10 guys from that gang. Everyone's fine with each other, but it could literally be that one member that has a problem with another member. And they might have a fight and then their friends are obviously going to back each other with the fight. And it could just create a massive divide. Even within... So niggas is beefing within the game because them niggas have so much. They got that shit. Them niggas is like fucking Bloods and Crips, borderline, because they got like branches off of that Mali strip. Mm -hmm. So they said niggas is both will be the same shit and be fucking beefing. Because they, they, they from different blocks. Basically. And they all be together, but then one nigga don't like this nigga, so they fighting, and his niggas is stankin' with him. But they all the same game. That's like some blood and crib shit. Like niggas be blood or crib, and they be beef with other crib niggas. That's like two. That's like two blood niggas. Both they be beefing because they from different blocks. Yeah, but they both ate. Yeah. <laughs> that shit weird. That shit weird, but that's gang shit, man. Pat circle where things are getting. That shit is like that everywhere. That's how I let you know. Like the world is just like every the same. The shit is happening somewhere else. Like, nigga, you think you don't even nigga going through some bullshit with your friends, nigga, and somebody else somewhere else is, too. Or you think y'all niggas only niggas beefing with, nah, nigga, this shit is going on everywhere. Maybe there's not enough money coming through, maybe there's a drought with drugs. Some people will look into their circle and think, who can we rob? But I know I refer to Marley Strip as a gang, but in reality, I say they're much organized than what you would call just a normal street gang. And they have very active operations in place to stop law enforcement. And they heavily monitor police activity just to make sure they're safe. This includes waiting outside police stations to record police number plates, placing spotters around the area to warn the police presence. And even Those niggas more smart, son. Them niggas is got them niggas get all the police license plate. We need to know all that. The undercovers. We need all the information, nigga, on everything. 
We getting money, nigga. Never been in police officers' information on social media to pose threats towards them. One officer noted that members were hanging out the back of their police station and they were actively taking pictures of him while writing down his number plate, which I guess is mainly an intimidation tactic. But it's not just their drug operation which has made Marley Strip catch some attention. Their beef with rival gangs in the area is probably one of the most active in London, especially in 018 and 19, when there was a lot of tit for tat war going on. So much back and forth that I can't even put it all into one view. But let's go back to 2017, when an affiliate of Marley Strip was stabbed to death in Wolfenstone. So his name was Elijah Donnelly, and he was a talented footballer who obviously started getting involved in the street life. Elijah and his friend was walking down the street oh, at night on May 7th, 2017. Oh, People say he was trapping that night in the area, but either way, two members of the Beeman gang, Ezra Soros and Morgan Mockford, spotted the two while they were riding out on their bicycles. The pair then hid behind the telephone box and leaped out and stabbed Elijah in the stomach, kissing the main artery and causing his intestines to start falling out. Elijah, after being stabbed, actually man That nigga stabbed his intestines to fall, that shit coming out like this. Oh my god. Sheesh. Pray for that boy. Oh, he dead, ain't he? Daddy. Comment a daddy in the comments. Even though rest in peace to him, but he daddy. Start falling out. Elijah, after being stabbed, actually managed to run to a nearby seashore bar called the Arabian Nights, but died two hours later from blood loss, while his friend managed to escape unharmed. And his killers have actually had a lot of previous convictions from carrying knives, mainly. This poses the question do you guys think there should be harsher sentencing for knife possession? One of the attackers has actually previously been caught with a knife in six separate occasions, so maybe if the police have dealt them niggas treat them niggas getting caught with knives, nigga, they let them niggas go because this is like, bro, it's a fucking knife, nigga. But nigga, niggas, is, they ain't really got guns like that out there. They got guns. Niggas got them. But they ain't got them like niggas got them. You feel me? They ain't got them straps in London like that. You got a strap, nigga, you run the shit. You run the shit with the strap out there, nigga. You got the, you got the strap, nigga. You a big dog, nigga. You got the juice. You got the juice, nigga. They gonna tell me I'm wrong. But nigga, all these London shits I'm doing, niggas is dying from stab wounds. So, it's niggas getting shot, though. Don't get it twisted. Niggas is definitely getting popped. These niggas must have got some big ass motherfucking knives. Probably. Them niggas probably got them. Probably know them niggas got them machetes, nigga. They got for some sure. kitchen knives. Yeah, probably. Shit. Kitchen's just a chucky knife. God bless. Damn, that's what a nut. Ooh, we you get hit with that a few times. Your ass out of here. Elijah might not have to lose his life. Both attackers were sent to life at prison at the age of 18. So in around 20 seconds of confrontation, three young boys now lost their lives. Anyway, this really started to ignite the feud in the area, and it saw some tit for tat from both areas. But unfortunately on March 2018, it was clear that this feud had now spiraled out of control. Three Mali Street members, Noik Nagiz, Hamza Ohat, and a 16-year-old boy that can't be named, were riding out on the hot spot for revenge. When they missed a command called Joseph William Torres, for a gang member called Samuel Hunter, and shot him dead in his van in Northwestern East London, which is not Obviously, always sad to hear when an innocent person gets caught up and stuff like this. But when you compare the two, they actually look hella similar. Like the Is same brain. What the nigga said? He probably got stabbed too. He looked like he was a good kid, man. Yeah. Shot and dead in his van. Shot and dead, yeah. <laughs> <coughs> we're riding out on the hot spot for revenge. When they missed a command called Joseph William Torres, for a gang member called Samuel Hunter, and shot him dead in his van in Northwestern East London. Which is obviously always sad to hear when an innocent person gets caught up and stuff like this. But when you compare the two, they actually look hella similar. Like the same race. That's why, yo, bro, that's why you see niggas die more innocent if you would die from gunshots, you feel me? When these niggas out there, them niggas, it's probably way less innocent people dying in London than it is out here. Cause they getting up on niggas. They know who they know who they stabbing. They ain't stabbing no innocent nigga unless he just hang out with them. But yeah. unless he probably was a drop, he probably a nigga giving the drop or something. Niggas be acting like niggas be innocent. Niggas don't be innocent. Yeah, niggas be thinking oh, they killed the wrong person. No, they didn't. <laughs> that nigga told them niggas I was over there and they shot at me. Y'all think he a good kid because he not involved. That's him right there though. That niggas in the streets, man. He a gang man. Look at him. He got niggas. He got niggas fool. Social features and height is scary. And interestingly, the two murderers of Joseph were actually caught breaking into the home of Israel Sockers, the 18 year old who was convicted of killing Elijah, who I mentioned before. The day after they broke into his house, the two members actually shot up an amusement arcade when they believed they saw Morgan Mockford, the other killer of Elijah. So you can already start to see where the links are between these murders and how the first murder of Elijah has now ignited the mistaken identity killing of Joseph. It also shows how dedicated the pair was to revenge. They were still looking for revenge months after the murder. Anyway, that pair is now locked up for life. After this 
the war in the area started going crazy. In one incident, a member of a local gang called Parry Court was driving out looking for Marley Street members and chased four members with a loaded gun, a knife and ammonia while they hid in the off license. Ammonia is basically acid and what some gang members would do was squirt it into rivals' faces, leaving scars and causing their face to peel off if strong enough. But yeah, Daniel was caught doing this and was sentenced to 15 years in prison and was actually caught running two county land operations while in prison. Like, you've really got to be a serious boss to run a whole drug operation while being locked in prison. But the one murder that really started to shine light on this whole situation was the murder of 14 year old Jaden Levy. On the 9th of January 2018, Marley Street members stole a Mercedes and rid out to the Beeman Boys territory. They caught 14 year old Jaden riding around on his moped when he was out dealing drugs and drove the car at him at a higher speed and pretty much killed him instantly from the impact. The Marley Street members then. Niggas ran him over, the little 14 year old. The little nigga was 14, chopping though. You heard them? They said he was out there chopping on the moped. Niggas seen them and. Nigga seen him and, and, and ran him over. Clicking up. <laughs> he probably trying to click on him too. Probably. Count the car and stop Jaden nine times. Even though nigga, they, oh my God, bro. You heard what they, they just ran did. ran him over and poked him out. Bro, them niggas demon. They were, so that mean they. Demons. They ran him over. Hopped out the whip. Backed out the knife. Sheffed him. Dong, dong, dong. Chucky them. Sheffed him. They call that a chef in the UK. That's a chef in. Thought about it. In January 2018, Marley Street members stole a Mercedes and rid out to the Beeman Boys territory. They caught 14 year old Jaden riding around on his moped when he was out dealing drugs and drove the car at him at a higher speed and pretty much killed him instantly from the impact. The Marley Street members then jumped out the car and stabbed Jaden nine times even though he was already dead, then fled away from the scene. One of these kids. They was already dead. They said, uh, we go, nah, 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 we making sure this shit done right. You out of here! They poked him again. He was dead off the hit. They poked him nine times. The impact of the car killed him. He's 14. Your baby. And they jumped out and poked the baby up. Phone him. So he took our brother. Lately, they've been heartless. Heartless. Them niggas heartless. They killed a 14 year old. It's for my brother. Yeah, it had to be about some. It had to be. That's nigga. 19 year old Ayub, who was sentenced to life for the murder. Ayub is a classic example of a kid who was had a troubled childhood. He was then groomed into joining the gang. His father died while young and he was put into foster care and worked under a Marley Street County down operation. And now this young man has now got to spend the majority of his life behind bars. Now when most people think about the group Marley Street, the rapper Richie comes to mind the most. He pretty much set the platform for the group with his song Bingo and put his younger members on that baby name. He is now doing numbers. And just a side note, I think Richie is a seriously underrated rapper. Like, I don't think he's really got the recognition that he deserves. Well, allegedly, Richie was involved in a double murder of two drug dealers back in 2015. Mm. Now, this isn't actually all confirmed, and it's kind of just speculation. But Richie talks a lot in his lyrics how he beat a crazy case, and the timelines kind of match up. So, in 2014, a group of seven Marley Street members stabbed to death two rival drug dealers in the East London area of Leytonstone. Four were found guilty, and three were found not guilty. But one member actually fled to Algeria straight after the murder. Five years later, in 2019, this same member returned to the UK to clear his name, quote unquote, and was put on trial, and was eventually found not guilty on the double murder. And this was the same year that Richie burst onto the drill scene, where he mentions he beat the case. Obviously, he was found not guilty for the murder, so if it was him or not, either way, the person managed to beat the case. But if you actually type in Rich on YouTube, you'll see all of his original songs are gone. He just straight re uploads on there. He put a message on his Insta, pretty much saying he's stepping away from the gangland and is now devoting his life to Islam, which is why he deleted all the videos. Which, if that is the case, then congrats to him. It takes a lot to step out of that life and start first. So, best of luck to him, and I hope he continues to follow that path. Whether that's actually the case or not, who knows though? We'll have to see. If you haven't noticed as well, none of these Mali Street murders are actually Somali. Even the Hebrew is half Irish and Moroccan. So it just goes to show, even though the gang is called Mali Street, the gang is quite diverse. So in this video, I've probably named around 5 to 10 people under the age of 20 who have either lost their life or freedom to the streets. Obviously, they have sad cases like you who have had unfortunate starts to life, which has led them to make stupid decisions, which I'm sure you now regrets. But guys, cases like this are becoming way too common now. If you're watching this video and are starting to associate with some sort of gang activity or rivalries, then just stop now, please. If you're ready for the involvement, then fair enough. Maybe you can't be saved anymore. But this is a message for young people. Nah. Like the message. Word. Dexter. I like, he, I like how he did that, though. Them niggas flee, too. Nigga, chill. Niggas, stop playing with them.
Niggas is fleed up. I'm gonna start getting in the room. I'm gonna slowly start getting in the room. Stop while you can now. These people who you think are your brothers and have got you for life. Spend five years in prison and see which one will still be picking up your calls and sending you money. Ask someone who's doing life in prison right now. How many of his friends are still sending you money? Well, all these people in the video are now spending 20 years plus in prison. Their old friends or gang members, wherever you want to call them, will you be getting on with their lives? Starting a family, getting a job, going on holiday? While well, you're stuck in the box because you wanted to ride out for them same friends. And like this mum who I talked about earlier in this video, since she still can't sleep at night after three years of her son's murder. Every day she goes to bed thinking her son will magically walk through the door and the nightmare will be done. Do you want to put someone's mother through that? And more importantly, do you... Like, comment, subscribe, man. I don't hear that sad shit, man. Yeah, man. Like, comment, like, comment subscribe. Go check out the merch, man. Go put the links in the description. Everything is there. It's there for you, so just go there. It'll be there. Be there or be square. Or get square. Sweet.